Dear brothers and sisters, presidents and sisters, this is uh, Mark Davis. I want to thank each of you for uh, the contribution you made to our coordinating council yesterday. Certainly the spirit was very strong. Appreciate each of you being there and the comments shared and for all the work that you do. In follow up to that meeting, I told you that there were a couple items that I was not able to get to and we had several agenda items that we did not deal with yesterday. Some of those we're going to roll forward to our August Coordinating Council meeting, but I do want to take a couple of them with you today, and then there will be uh, one or two other presentations that I'll share with you uh, electronically also. I, I would invite you to uh, review these over the next week to two weeks. And what I've done is I've asked Robin to uh, call each of the stake presidents and to schedule a time when we might be able to speak on the phone for 10 or 15 minutes and just review these electronic presentations and these other items that I'm covering in this way from the coordinating council with you. Make sure all of your questions are a, uh, answered and to see what I can do to be of assistance. Addition, additionally, if there's any type of training that you would like my help with, training with your presidency, training with your stake or ward councils, with your bishoprics and bishopric meetings, or just as President, Walt, or President Clyde mentioned yesterday, if you would um, like to have me go out and do uh, visits, ministering visits, less active visits to Melchizedek priesthood holders or others, really be honored to do that and I'm, I'm able to do that during the week where my travel schedule on the weekend is more challenging. So please invite me to uh, participate as I can be most helpful. Okay, so let's just work through a couple of things here quickly. Won't take too much of your time. You'll see that several of these items we already um, worked on. Uh, the sharing the gospel, we had two things under sharing the gospel that will come by way of attachments shortly. One is this Hispanic outreach effort that I mentioned to you about. And then just in general, a presentation from Elder Pearson, our area president on growing the church. There was one additional item I wanted to touch base here, and this is something we've talked about many times over the last two years, and that is just keeping our focus on reactivation visits to our less active Melchizedek priesthood holders. Again, the idea behind this was simply for ward councils to come to know and identify each less active Melchizedek priesthood brother in their ward, to prayerfully identify one or two that you'd like to be visited on a weekly basis, and to have the full-time missionaries go out that week with a member of the council or a member of the presidency or the bishopric and extend an invitation to that brother and his family to return in some way to church participation. Our full-time missionaries are underutilized and would love to be going out on a weekly basis with members of ward councils or members of presidencies. And what we want them to do on those visits is to teach a simple gospel principle, particularly the restoration, bear testimony and invite the people to just see is there, is there room in their heart to come and be with us again. So I just invite you to continue to emphasize that with uh, bishops and ward councils to identify those less active Melchizedek priesthood holders, understand their background and their situations, and see what we can do to rescue them and bring them home. There's another population of similar high quality and deeply converted people who've come off the covenant path, and those are our sisters who were endowed but aren't currently active in the church. They likewise can be involved in that identification in those visits. Okay. Please, if you'll just continue to talk about that with bishops and ward councils so that they'll stay focused on those individuals, that would be wonderful. Um, we're going to address these items listed here under using the proper name of the church. Uh, that is a continuing focus of the prophet and the first presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve, and we've seen many significant changes that they're implementing to follow that council. Um, but we'll roll that into our August meeting. Also on Sabbath day, we'll roll that into our August meeting. I think it'd be instructive for each of you to review the clip that is on your thumb drive from Elder Holland's talk given in gen general conference. There's, you can see the section of that clip, the minutes that are covered where he talks about the worship experience in sacrament meeting and think through how we might want to teach that to our brothers and sisters to enhance the reverence and the spirit and really the overall experience for the members that are coming and our friends who are worshiping with us. And of course, teaching in the Savior's way, President McMaster and I were together in his stake and attended a quorum meeting not too long ago. And afterwards we counseled about how can that elders quorum provide a more engaging, more spiritual, more interactive learning environment. 
Um, hopefully that with the change to the two hour meeting schedule, everyone remembers that teacher council meetings did not go away. They're simply held now on a quarterly basis and those teacher council meetings need to be great so that we can continue to improve the culture of learning in our classes and our quorums. Uh, today, under other matters, you'll notice there I was going to share some information with you about the new youth and development, uh, children and youth development program that's coming out. Today, the church released a video, so if you want to see it, it's on the uh, LDS newsroom. You can go and see that, giving just some shadowy information about the new program. Let me share some, some specifics. Number one, there will be these components. It's based on Luke 2.52 where the Savior, it says, grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This new development program for primary age children and youth will use that scripture as a basis and focus on developing wisdom, stature, favor with God, favor with man. There will be learning components to this, but they will be fully integrated with the home base church supported come follow me curriculum and then professional and academic learning that will be um, interest that the youth have there'll be very personalized goal-based things that are going to be selected by the youth there will be service and activity components of this new youth program that will be really interesting and enjoyable including what are called for the strength of youth conferences that have been held internationally where youth across multiple stakes are brought together for extended day conferences Personal development will still be a part of this, but it'll all be um, locally appropriate types of development and personal goals set by the individual child or youth in areas of development that are of interest to them. And then the, the year's activities will be geared around helping them accomplish those goals. There is a mobile app that's being developed, an engaging website, and there'll be some emblems of accomplishment uh, that will be given out to the youth as, youth as they accomplish their goals. Okay, should be exciting. What, what's going to happen is in August, there will be an announcement in October, September and October. There will be worldwide training broadcasts for youth leaders and for parents and youth, and then a launch in January of 2020. Should be excellent. San Diego Service Mission, all of you got to meet Elder and Sister Dyer, who are wonderful leaders. They are anxious to have themselves or the other um, senior missionaries that are serving with them come and provide training to wards, ward councils, state councils, fifth Sunday lessons, anything that they can do to get the word out that we have a service mission here, that mission papers run through the normal missionary application process online, and that we have many more of our young men and young women join the San Diego service mission if that is an appropriate way for them to serve. So it's really important for us to get the word out to all the wards, to all of our bishops, to all of our ward councils, so that we can find more opportunities for some of our young people that are being left behind um, to have a way to serve locally. Um, please let me know if you need the Dyer's contact information or if there's anything that I can do to assist you in the training of your bishops and others about this great service opportunity. Under Just Serve, you have on your thumb drive a video from Sister Bingham, the General Relief Society Presidency. Um, a significant amount of the responsibility for Just Serve is now being shared with our Stake and Ward Relief Society presidents. The idea is simply to have them help us to get the word out of service opportunities and help us find opportunities to serve that can be put on that Just Serve website so that individuals and groups both in and out of the church that want to serve within our community can find those resources. So please on, on, uh, watch that video. We were going to watch it yesterday in our meeting. It's about three minutes long from Sister Jean Bingham. And then uh, Stake and Water Relief Society presidents will, I'm sure, hear from our local Just Serve people, uh, Rebecca Benyon and Robin Gephardt, uh, with further information. Regarding self-reliance services, I have a brief PowerPoint presentation that I'd like to walk through with you on this. And let me just launch that here. <coughs> Hopefully this uh, video is not fouling up as I'm trying to do this. Um, okay, so I'm going to walk through this fairly quickly. First of all, um, the Welfare and Self-Reliant Services Department has been blended together into one department with a real simple mission, and that is to minister to those in need, build spiritual and temporal self-reliance, and bless both givers and receivers. There's a video here that we're going to skip through because I don't want to spend your time 
in a PowerPoint having you watch a video, but it is on the thumb drive and available to you. This is just a summary of all the Self-Reliance devotionals and the people that participated in groups over the last uh, two year period of time. These are the results which are significant of behavioral changes people have made after participating in Self-Reliance groups. You'll note across each of these, these were people that were surveyed before they started and people that were surveyed in week 10 after they had participated. The changes that they had made in their lives were very dramatic and we're very comfortable that self-reliant services and these particular modules that are being shared are simply going to continue to be expanded. In fact, let me share with you kind of the way we started this, right? We established a stake self-reliance committee that oversaw the launch of uh, self-reliance devotionals with facilitators and groups and each stake is then uh, requested rather than having an employment center like we used to to have a stake self-reliance resource center where members before during and after the groups can continue to receive support as they seek to improve their self-reliance but it's important and i think all of you are already starting to see this that there's the traditional way to do this but this is very very flexible so you can have many self-reliance devotionals and launch groups at different times uh, we're seeing that some groups, uh, self-reliance groups, are forming without doing a devotional. We're seeing groups that are based in ward buildings rather than at a stake level. Some stakes in particular are pretty broad and, and diverse and, and, and travel time is prohibitive for some. So we're seeing that uh, we're just having groups and individuals form up uh, as needs are being identified sometimes through ministering interviews. Your stake self-reliance committee has great latitude, and I guess that's why we have this slide here, is that the key to success, and success being viewed as helping people become more self-reliant, is really with your stake self-reliance committee. So this committee is presided over by a counselor in the stake presidency, uh, by your stake relief society president who's a member, by the senior bishop or the chairman of the bishop's welfare council, by your stake self-reliance uh, specialist, and by others that you may have participating. That stake self-reliance committee is really meant to be a strategic committee where they're looking at the stake and they're looking at what are the needs of the stake of the individual members and how do we address those needs and what can we do to, um, what can we do to help? And uh, we've had these four courses that we've been able to use thus far, employment and, and entrepreneurship and higher education and personal finance Personal finance is getting about 50% of all the participation, but there are additional courses coming. And uh, two of those you may already be aware of, I'll share those with you now, but the idea is that this Stake Self-Reliance Committee is gonna grow in stature. Um, the BYU Pathways Program is now going to be part of that Stake Self-Reliance Committee to look around in the stake and say, how can we share this information and get people involved with Pathway if seeking higher education is something they need. So I just invite you to have your counselor that's over this committee really take this seriously. The participants take it seriously, have them meet on a monthly basis or as needed. They can do it virtually, they can do it in person, but again, really take it seriously to look at the self-reliance needs of the stake and to um, use the resources available to them as is appropriate. So I'm going to skip this video that's embedded. Let's talk a little bit about what's called English Connect. I think the stake presidents will all be aware of this, stake relief society presidents may not. The church has launched this English learning program. It's part of the self-reliance module. It is um, English Connect 1, English Connect 2. They are 25 week long classes. And you'll notice that the, in order to be successful, they need to attend that 25 week period every week for a 90 minute class and then commit to practice 10 hours each week to become comfortable in the language. They do need to be literate in their own native language and they do need to know the Latin or Roman alphabet and basic um, phonics. And of course they need internet access because this program will have them doing things online like you may have seen with Duolingo or others. When they come to that class each week, full-time missionaries can be there not as the primary teacher but as conversation people to talk with friends and neighbors. This is a wonderful thing we can do for those who are members of the church that want to learn, for members of the church who are less active and would like to learn, for non-member friends, non-member spouses, anyone really in our communities, we can offer this 
And this can be taught right in the local area where people that have the, the language need is most acute. So they can gather there and they can take these English classes and, and, and that just opens up opportunities for them. English Connect 1 is for people starting at ground zero. English Connect 2 is for those who are kind of at a low to intermediate you know, area. And there is an English Connect 3, which will be sufficient to launch them into BYU Pathways and uh, eventually online learning for those that really want to continue going. Now, this brand new module has just been launched and it's for young adults and it's called Life Skills. And this life skills uh, course, very interesting, is to help young adults. You can see this table of content on the side here. It basically went through all of the self-reliance materials and called out the most important pieces for young people as they're launching out of their homes and into college and careers. You notice pieces of personal finances about setting a budget, avoiding unnecessary debt, interviewing, etc. So this is a pretty neat thing, and, and one thing that I'll mention right here is that uh, Kirk Draper, who is our uh, Self-Reliance Services Manager locally, he is your single point of contact on anything Self-Reliance-ish. So if you want to know how do you consider looking at English Connect in your state, call Kirk Draper and work with him. If you want to know how to access BYU Pathways and how to connect with Pathway Missionaries, contact him. If you want to offer a life skills class in your young single adult ward, call Kirk Draper. He will be, again, your single point of contact on all self-reliant services things, including Pathways, English Connect, the four Pathways modules, and other things that will be coming. He will kind of be the, the pe person that you can go to to point you in the right direction for everything. Now, for some of our sisters and others that don't know Pathways, let me just give you a quick Pathways overview. Um, this is done by our area presidency a few months back and shared with us. You, you can see here, no surprise here, that the more education you have, the higher your annual earnings level. But most interesting is this one over here, and that is that those who, uh, who continue on with additional levels of education also tend to be more active in the church. So they have those with a college degree, higher level of activity than those with no college. Those who have a college degree have higher levels of temple recommend holders than those who don't. Higher levels of paying of tithing than those who don't. It doesn't really mean that they have to get a bachelor's, but for every incremental level of education they get from high school to certificates to associate's degrees to etc., religiosity increases within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So we see the value of helping people to become ed more educated. What we see though is that there's constraints to that among most people. Cost is a huge one. Uh, not everybody can figure out how to pay for higher ed. Fear, how do we do it? Just paralyzed by not knowing what they don't know. And access is a big thing. How can we do this if, if we have two children, if we're working full time, where in the world can we can we do this? So you'll see here's the number of members of the church in the United States who have bachelor's degree, who speak English, of Spanish speakers, and the, the, the prophet is leading us to help people access education. And they're doing this because by, by offering education anywhere anybody lives in the world, as long as they can get internet access, they can have access to higher education, high school diplomas, certificates in various areas of specialization, associate's degree, bachelor's degrees, and ultimately master's degrees at a ridiculously inexpensive price compared to everything else. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. So let me just cover a couple of the elements. The purpose of BYU Pathways, this you know opportunity to increase your education, is really to help people become more committed and engaged with the Lord Jesus Christ. Helps them to become learners, helps them to lead their families, helps them to provide for themselves. And again, their religious behavior tends to increase as their education goes on. So English Connect is a piece of that. Why? Because we have some people that would love to go to higher education, but they're not even proficient yet in the language of their country. So for those who we have here, think about your Spanish speaking units or if you have other language units, how might English Connect be able to help them for the first 25 weeks, 50 weeks, even 150 weeks, a year and a half, getting them from no English skills to proficient in English? That will bless them in so many different ways and then that opens up for them if they want to, to participate in BYU Pathways which then can lead to a BYU online education if they want. 
So English Connect opens the door to Pathways. And for those of you who don't know, Pathways is a one-year program which teaches life skills, basic mathematics and reasoning, basic writing and communication, and there's religion courses associated with it. At the end of the 12-week, 12 12-month 12 period, once they've completed BYU Pathways, they can now apply to be a BYU online student and qualify for Pell Grants and financial aid to pay for that program. And they do not have to take SATs, ACTs, turn in GPAs from high school. In fact, if they didn't even graduate from high school, if they complete BYU Pathways successfully, they can go right into BYU online and begin working towards a certificate, working towards an associate's degree, or directly on a bachelor's degree. Each piece, each step, increases their education, increases their opportunities. Now this is just an, an illustration of some of the programs available, certificate programs for those who want to get a certificate, those who want to get an associate's degree through BYU Pathways and then BYU Online, Idaho Online, and those who want to get a bachelor's degree. Um, just the impact is significant as we mentioned on earnings, there's no surprise here, but I just hope that um, you'll have your stake self-reliance committee look at this. We have BYU Pathway missionaries that are available to come and talk to wards and talk to youth groups and talk to stake relief society devotionals and come and speak with the bishops. This is not designed to be a burden for any stake leaders in any way. It's meant to be something that the stake members can learn about and if they want to adopt it, they then start working through the church education program and there's even a virtual online pathways program now they can use to access this for those who are working. So great reactivation tool for prospective elders, for young single adults, very, very low cost and helpful, particularly for returned missionaries that don't have the ability to go on to traditional higher education. English Connect will then connect them from not being conversant in English to BYU Pathways and then leads them on to BYU Online and will just lift those immigrant communities and those who don't speak our, our language to higher levels of success in the United States. So please just kind of understand it and let uh, Kirk Draper and our Pathway missionaries and others be of assistance if you would like to adopt this in your stake. So we'll just provide, we'll meaning the area presidency and me as the area 70, we'll provide information, but we're not gonna set quotas, we're not gonna set requirements. This is up to you. It's kind of your stake self-reliance committee should look at this and think, do we need this and how do we need it? And counsel with us if you want help from us as to how we can help you be successful. But the the area 70 and my role under the um, under the aegis of the area presidency is to help you be successful with these various groups that could benefit from um, from this 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 uh, self-reliance effort okay I think I just have one or two things left that I wanted to cover with you <clears throat> and thank you so much for your patience as we're covering this in this format uh, under some of the business matters um, let's see we're still looking for uh, program coordinators for our addiction recovery program that's not people that are leading individual groups but that's program coordinators in San Diego and Carlsbad to kind of provide overall supervision to the group leaders of the 25 or so groups that participate in uh, San Diego. Uh, by way of information, Elder and Sister McGee will be concluding their mission on June 1st as our church service missionary coordinating couple. Elder and Sister Harleen, who live in the San Clemente Stake, which will become part of the combined Carlsbad, Carlsbad Irvine Coordinating Council, which I will be supervising along with the San Diego Coordinating Council. They're already serving and they will now become our Elder and Sister McGee to help us coordinate our activities. That'll begin again on June 1st. Um, item number three here, combined YSA units. We've had many of your YSA units that have chosen to combine. We have some of you who have not chosen to combine, which is fine. For those who have combined, we're really interested, we, me, are interested in what kind of results are you seeing? Are we seeing, did we see half the ward disappear and go into inactivity? Are we seeing all of those who combined stayed and we've now seen an increase in activity? Um, is there more reactivation? Is missionary work changed? What positive and or negative results have we seen from the com combination of these units? And what, what are the next steps to support these YSA units 
uh, both in their own units and collectively across the area. President Clark does preside over our Young Single Adult Area Council, and I know they have their quarterly sacrament meetings that everybody gathers to, but we're very concerned that our young single adults are having their needs met and hope that you'll just kind of look at that for those of you who have combined YSA units and see how we're doing. Also, we have a mid-singles and a, and a single adult uh, committee. We have in Pacific Beach, we have a mid-singles ward, which is in the San Diego North Stake, and the San Diego North Stake supervises our mid-single uh, work and our single adult work at the kind of council level. And so, uh, anyway, we're going to hear a report. I won't fill it anymore. Robin already sent you an email about emergency response and communication. Lastly here, just note that, uh, well, in fact, you know what? I'm going to have you scrap this. Uh, these date, this date for our next coordinating council was set for August 25th. However, my next area council meeting isn't until August 24th, and I had my area council just on uh, Saturday before this Sunday's coordinating council, and so much new information was given <coughs> that I wasn't really able to synthesize it as effectively as I would like to. So I think we're going to need to have at least a, a week break in between there so I have time to do that, try to keep our meetings to three hours. Our next coordinating council will be only with the San Diego Council, not with the Northern Council, uh, because of the new combination that's happening with Irvine and Carlsbad missions into the Newport Beach mission and the Newport Beach Coordinating Council. Okay, thank you for your patience in listening to this. Call me if you have any questions. Again, Robin will be following up. Bless you.